Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation, a quintic one. We have sine x to the fifth power plus cosine x to the fifth power equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. I made a video on this problem a while ago, and at the time I don't think anyone has, anyone else made a video on this, I haven't seen it on YouTube. If you do, maybe after I made the video some pe other people did, just let me know. But I'll share the links here and also down below. Anyways, that was a really long solution and then looks like there's an easier way to solve this problem, especially using calculus. We can kind of look at it from a maximum minimum perspective and I'm, I'm pretty sure there are other approaches as well. Please let me know. Anyways, let's get started. So we have this equation and obviously at this point you can always guess and check you know, look at the extreme values, so on and so forth. But we want, make, we want to make sure we find all the solutions. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the left-hand side as a function of x. So, let's go ahead and define f of x, where x is any real number, as sine x to the fifth power plus cosine x to the fifth power. Now, obviously, when you're looking at an expression like this, it would always be helpful to compare this to the equation sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And how could you do that? So here's a question that I'd like to pose at this point. Do you think sine x to the fifth power is going to be less than or equal to sine squared x, or is it going to be greater than or equal to sine squared x? So let's go ahead and hypothesize something and then check. It doesn't have to be true, right? So I'm just going to assume that, hey, sine x to the fifth power is less than or equal to sine squared x. Okay. Is this true or not? How could I check? Well, suppose we start with the result. So at the end, I want to get this. So I'm just going to roll the tape backwards. So we, this is equivalent to subtracting sine squared from both sides. Nothing we do will actually, you know, uh, mess with the inequality symbol. So we're not going to multiply or divide by a negative, so everything we do will be reversible. Make sense? So if I'm subtracting sine squared, you can add sine squared to get, uh, get back. So this is going to give us a zero here, which is nice because now we can factor sine squared out. And that would give you sine x to the third power minus one is less than or equal to zero. Okay, great. So now let's take a look at it. Sine squared x is always positive, or at least non-negative. Obviously, there are values for which this is zero, but this can't be negative, right? This is going to be greater than or equal to zero. What about the other piece? If you want the product to be less than or equal to zero, then this guy over here needs to be less than or equal to zero. So now another question arises. Is it true that sine cubed x minus one is less than or equal to zero? I'll put a question mark because I'm not sure if it is true, right? So if you go ahead and take a look at this expression, this would imply the following. Add one to both sides, and then cube root both sides. Obviously, cube rooting both sides is not gonna really mess again with the inequality because we're not square rooting or squaring both sides. So we're good. If you cube root both sides, you're gonna get sine x is less than or equal to one. So what does that tell you? This tells you that this is a true statement. Now I can get back by cubing both sides, which is again irre uh, reversible, and then I can just subtract one and to get this inequality. In other words, this is a true inequality, and therefore, since this is true, this is also less than or equal to zero, and since this is greater than or equal to zero, their product is going to be less than or equal to zero, which means this inequality is true, which means the one before that is true, and that basically implies the very first one. So my assumption was correct. Obviously, you could write it backwards. It's not very rigorous. I know it's not a proof by any means. I just wanted to show you real quick that this inequality will be satisfied. Okay, so this is true, and then what do we have? We have the other one, we can put it together, and so on and so forth. But before we get to that, I'm going to leave it at that and get back to our solution. So my solution involves the following. I have f of x equals sine x to the fifth power plus cosine x to the fifth power. I'm going to go ahead and differentiate this function. And to differentiate, remember we use the power rule, bring the 5 to the front, 
reduce to power and then multiply by the derivative of the inside by the chain rule, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. And for the second part, we're going to do the same thing, 5 times cosine x to the fourth, multiply by the derivative of cosine x, which is the derivative of the inside, but the derivative of cosine is negative sine, make sure you remember that. Uh, and also for integrals, this is going to be helpful, but that brings a negative sign, so I'm going to put the minus sign there and just multiply by a positive sign x, because I put the minus sign here. Make sense? So this is our derivative, and obviously we can factor out 5 sine x cosine x here, which will be very helpful. And then inside I'm going to get sine cubed x minus cosine cubed x. And this is f prime. Obviously, I want to find the critical point, so I want to set this equal to 0. If I set it equal to 0, I get the following. This can be 0, this can be 0, or this can be 0. Again, or. Those are separate solutions. So, we either have x equals 0, or x equals pi over 4, or x equals pi over 2. If we're going to stay uh, within 0 to 2 pi. Obviously, you can write this as a general solution, and we will. So now, if you check these values with the function, like what is the f of x, let's call these x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3. So what is f of x sub 1, which is f of 0? That will be, f of 0 would be 1, okay? I was just, what is going on here? 1 plus 0. And then f of x sub 2 is going to be f of pi over 4, and f of pi over 4 is just going to be, root 2 over 4. By the way, to find that, you're going to take um, the sine of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2, and then you're going to raise it to the fifth power, and then it's going to give you root 2 over 8, and then uh, just double it. You can do it. It's easy. I just wanted to skip that part. f of x sub 3 is going to be f of pi over 2, and as you know, that's also going to be 1. So here's the thing. This is going to be a smaller value. And if you look at the derivatives, like a table and so on and so forth, this is going to be one of the local minimum values. And these two are going to be the maximum values of the function. And guess what? We want f of x to be 1, right? We want this to equal 1. So which values are going to make it 1? There are two values, x equals 0 and x equals pi over 2. But you need to add multiples of 2 pi to this, so let's add 2 and pi, and 2 and pi, where n is an integer. Let me not forget that, because sometimes I forget to write it, and people say, hey, you didn't write it. Thank you for the reminders. This time I wrote it. Okay, so this is going to be the general solution to our equation. Before I show you the graph, let me go back to this inequality thing and show you real quick what we can do with that. So. We proved that sine x to the fifth is less than or equal to sine squared, and cosine x to the fifth similarly is going to be cosine squared because they behave the same way. When you add these up, our function sine x to the fifth plus cosine x to the fifth is going to be less than or equal to sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 1. But in fact, we want that to be 1, so we have to have this equality. They both have to be equal sign which gives you pretty much the same solutions as before. So let's go and take a look at the graph, and we'll finish up with that. Those are going to be the solutions, all right? So here's the graph of sine x to the fifth plus cosine x to the fifth. As you can see, it is tangent to the line y equals 1 because it takes the maximum value, so it's tangent. And you can also see the local minima here, here, and a couple other values. But those are going to be some of the solutions, and we already wrote the general solution. And this, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.